It's always good to write a book and do it through the tale of a person and the people around them because that's how we lead our lives. And by the way, that's how the Bible is written. If you want to understand how things happen, you begin with the people and see how do they touch history and the ripples go forth. Jennifer's a wonderful personal tale, but through her, you can understand genetics, understand all the advances in the late 1990s, and finally, you can get to CRISPR, this amazing technology for editing genes, and she was a pioneer of that. I love science, and I think it's great for the public to understand the beauty of science, but also the issues we're gonna have to face with science. And I wrote about Einstein because I thought physics defined the first half of the 20th century, and then Steve Jobs and the innovators because digital technology. But now I think biotechnology will be the defining uh, science that will define the early 21st century. I hope to convey the fact that science is exciting that actually watching a gel and then watching a bacteria that's been edited and seeing how it changes, that is beautiful, just like a piece of art or a piece of music. One of the things that struck me in this lab today is just how many astounding different paths you can go down now that we know how CRISPR-Cas9 works. And we can talk about anti-CRISPRs and all sorts of other things that can regulate it. And to watch that process here in the lab is so cool. The atmosphere at Berkeley is people in all sorts of disciplines who are coming together. And that cross-fertilization that you can have at a place like Berkeley is why it's a cradle of creativity. Things move fast in this world, but there was a very important moment in 2012 where the idea of creating a tool that would edit genes and then do it in humans took hold. And that will be a transformative moment in history.